Come on and stand to your feet. My people have already told me that I got a 15 minute clock. So um, this is going to be somewhat of an abbreviated word, but I need y'all to walk with me because God has an, uh, an objective that we want to meet. Second, first Corinthians chapter nine, verses 24 through 27. I'll be reading it from the New Living Translation. And it reads like this. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? Then he says, watch this, Lady T. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. Look at somebody and tell them, I ain't just doing this thing for my health. I don't get up on Sunday morning just for my health. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, <clears throat> I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. I want to preach from the thought, I play to win. I play to win. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for this word we got. We pray even now that you would breathe on it, God. We pray that, God, you would season our hearts and our minds that we might be able to receive what it is that you have for us on today because we believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In this text, Paul is helping us to understand that in this race, this thing that we call life, that there is a goal that we are trying to reach. And he says, I run this race to win. I remember back in the day, one of the things that always comes back to my remembrance is how my grandfather always made sure that my brother understood, my brother and I understood what it meant to be in competition. My grandfather had this organization called the Blue Jackets, and my grandfather was very serious about his basketball, his softball, and his baseball. He would do everything in his power to make sure that you had everything that you needed so you were positioned to win. The reality was, y'all, my grandfather would not only come and pick us up, but he made sure that we had the very best uniforms. He made sure that we had everything that we needed to make sure that we were positioned to win. But my granddaddy, y'all, he didn't play. He didn't play because if you came in practice and you acted like you didn't want to be there and you didn't give your very best, he would blow the whistle and he would tell everybody to come to the center of the court and he would say, I need y'all to understand. He says, I don't go out and buy these uniforms for nothing. He would say, I don't pay them to let us use this gym so we can come in here and act like we don't want to win. He says, I'll even make sure that if y'all don't have something to eat after practice, I make sure that y'all got money to go get food. He says, I give y'all all of these things to make sure that you are positioned to win. And he said, watch this. He says, if you come here and you don't want to win, he says, all you need to do is take off my uniform and he says there is the door you can let the door hit you whether good luck I ain't making to say that but he would tell you you ain't got to stay in here if you don't want to win but if you want to win he says I'm gonna give you everything you need to win and what I found out y'all is some of us in the body of Christ don't even understand that each and every day that you wake up each and every day that you take a breath God is giving you everything that you need so that you can win in every aspect of life but some of us don't want to get in the game some of us just want to participation trophy but I come to talk to the ones this morning that want to get in the game and you've made up in your mind that you're going to win this thing anybody want to get everything that God has for you and you can't get it just sitting where you're sitting you got to be able to get to a point where you're ready to win and that means you got to get in the game do I have anybody in the building today that will declare I want everything that God has for me I wish you would nudge your neighbor and declare I'm ready to win I ain't coming here to lose the God that I serve says that everything that he got for me it is for me do I have any worshipers that will rise up on your feet and declare I play to win I don't do this thing just for participation trophy I do this
this thing so I can get the crown of glory that God has for me. I play to win. Watch this, y'all. Winning requires a different mindset. Winning requires a different mindset for the person that really wants to win. But the problem with some of us is, is that many of us want to sit on the sideline and receive the trophy. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Now we live in a society, y'all, where we got all of these parents that don't want the, tra the champions to get a champion trophy. They just want everybody to get a participation trophy. When the reality is, those kids just sat there and didn't do the work to get the trophy. Anybody here understand that God it requires of us to have a different mindset. We used to call it, we used to call it, Quentin, we used to call it the zone. Because you will have your mind to the point where nothing can break your focus. But watch this, y'all. God showed me three things. I'm going to give you these three things God showed me, mama. Because if you're going to play to win, there's some things that we all have to do. There's some things that we all have to do. The first thing that we have to do, y'all, if we're prepared to win, if we're going to win, Eric, the first thing you got to do is you got to be conditioned. Okay, y'all just like me, y'all looking at me today. I, I, I'm going I'm to hook y'all up right here. Watch this. You got to be prepared for when the season comes your way. So the problem with some of us is we wait for the season to show up, and we think that we're going to get ready when the season shows up. But you got to be ready when the season shows up. Can I give you all y'all this analogy? This is a little boy next door to me, y'all. He just moved into the house next door. And my brother-in-law just got the head coaching job at Indian River High School. He is now now the head coach for the varsity boys basketball team at Indian River High School, the best high school in the land. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. But watch this. He tells me, he says, he says, I'm going to go out for basketball. I said, wow, that's good. I said, what school you go to? He said, I go to Indian River. I said, wow, I know the head coach. Then the day left, um, the day left Shan, and then they came back again, and his dad was in the yard. And I had told my sister, I said, Chris. There's this young man that lives behind me, and he's going out for the team. She said, well, I got some word for you. She says, tell the young man that if he doesn't show up to conditioning, he might as well not come out for tryouts. Because everybody that's in conditioning is working to make sure that when tryouts come, that they're ready to get the position. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. How many of y'all know that some of us are waiting to get to the tryout before we get conditioned? But you got to be conditioned before the tryout happens. Do I have any believers in here that understands that you can't wait for stuff to happen before you pray? You can't wait for stuff to happen before you tithe. You can't wait for stuff to happen before you get conditioned to receive what God has for you. So watch this. The first thing we got to give y'all, y'all, is that the first nugget I want to leave y'all with is you got to be conditioned. You got to be conditioned so that you will be prepared to get what God has for you. But then the second thing, y'all, is you got to watch this. Understand that there are going to be some critics when you get in the game. Watch this, y'all. There are going to be critics that's going to talk about you. Mom, when I, when I played for Indian River, my shot, I thought, had pretty form and everything. But then this joker started joking my form. He would say I would shoot the ball and it looked like I was popping and locking when I shot. And watch this, y'all. He started talking about me. And then the enemy started trying to mess with my mind, Tasha. And then the enemy said, well, maybe you can't shoot as well as you think you can shoot. And watch this, I said, you know what? I don't care what it looked like as long as it go in when I shoot it. How many of y'all know that every now and then when you get in the game, there are going to be some critics around you that's going to start talking about the stuff that you're doing. But watch this. You can't let the enemy or the people that start to criticize you get you off your game. You got to make up in your mind. I don't care what you say. I'm going to win. I don't care how you talk about me. I'm going to get to where God has for me.
Okay, that ain't bless y'all. That ain't bless y'all. Here it is, mom. Um, um, watch this, y'all. Um, just yesterday, just yesterday, yesterday we had we had food bank, Tasha, and we didn't have enough volunteers. I'm throwing a plug. We ain't had enough volunteers. I don't know where they were. They must have been that cookout and the Trisha. They must have been cookout and all this kind of stuff. But we didn't have enough volunteers. So so when we pulled up on the property, mama, the trash can was full and it was overflowing. And watch this, y'all. When you're on the team, watch this. Not just your position is what's important. When you're on the team, everybody's position is important, and you ain't got to be the one that's in that position to take care of another position. So when I came up here, Tasha, I saw the trash can was overflowing, and watch this, just because I'm pastor don't mean that I can't pick some trash up. Y'all, y'all, y'all ain't gonna help me. So, so Trisha, I go out there and I got a trash bag, and I got the little thing that you pick the trash up and put it in the trash bag, sham. So I'm picking up the trash, and I'm putting it in the bag. Then this dude that's always been one of my nemesis, always been somebody that just an antagonizing type dude. This dude pulls up, y'all, and he says to me, he says, so this what you do now. <laughs> he says, so this is what the pastor do now. I thought, he says, so this is what you do now. And you know what God said? God said, don't say nothing. He said, just keep doing what you're doing. He said, because watch this, when you are on the team, it doesn't matter what position you have to play on any given day. He says, you got to play to win no matter where I need you. Do I have anybody in the building today that understands that when God needs you to step in, you can't worry about your title. You can't worry about where you work at. You got to do what it takes to make something happen. Do I have any MVPs at the crib that understands that you got to be able to absorb criticism? Watch this. When you're playing the game, there's always going to be somebody to talk trash. But you got to be able to absorb the criticism and stay focused on what God has called us to do. Look, Paul says, he says, I play to win. That means when I begin to play, I don't care what you say. I don't care what your game looks like. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Okay. Okay, so, so you got to be able to absorb it. I got four minutes, y'all. I'm going to get out y'all way so we can play some games. But watch this. The other thing that God showed me was, the other thing he showed me was, in absorbing the criticism, you also have to work hard to win. Um, one of the things that bothers me about believers, especially those in our culture, those in our culture, can I just be real this morning? It's amazing, y'all, how our culture just want to do enough to get by. <laughs> well, you just, just better be glad I came. I know I'm 15 minutes late, but am I here? It's something about our culture that we just want to do the bare minimum. I remember when I was trying out for Indian Rivers basketball team. Coach McLendon came in town, and he was with Coach Lassiter. And Coach McLendon was one of his mentors, and he had us running drills. I was a senior at Indian River High School, and so every time he called a drill, I was the first one in line, and I ran like my life depended on it. Watch this. I had just transferred from a Virginia Beach school. So nobody in the system knew who I was. So while we're running, the boys that had grew up in the system from junior high to JV to varsity are telling me, Teron, slow down. They were saying when we got in the drills, mama, say, Teron, you running too fast. Slow down. I said, some in my spirit say, no, bro. You better keep giving everything you got. And I kept giving everything I had, Melissa. And every time he called the drill, I was the first one and I ran as hard as I could. And then weeks later, mama, when the list came out of who made the team, the coach pulled me to the side. And he said, Teron, I'm gonna tell you something. He said, I don't usually keep seniors and I was gonna cut you. But when Coach McLendon showed up, you got on the court 
and you worked harder than anybody else. And he said, that is the reason why you're on the team. Do I have anybody in the building that understands the reason why you're at the place where you're at is because you made up in your mind you're going to work hard. Do I have any other people in here that will declare, I work hard on my job so I can position. I work hard wherever God put a door for me so I can be in position. Anybody here make up in your mind? If I'm gonna play this game, if I'm gonna play to win, I gotta work hard. Every time we got in huddle, Chris, I don't care, Katricia, I don't care if we were winning or losing, we would get in the huddle and coach would say, on three, work hard. On three, work hard. And we would chant, work hard. And what I've learned is, is in the body of Christ, we got to remind ourselves that God don't want no mediocre stuff from us. He said he'll spit a, a lukewarm Christian out of his mouth. God said, if I give you my very best, I require your very best. So can you look at somebody and tell them, you ain't doing God a favor by doing what you do. You're doing what God requires of you. Do I have any Christians in the building that will say, God, I understand now you position me to get everything that you got for me. Anybody want to win today? Anybody make up in your mind? I play to win. So when I show up, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to absorb the criticism and I'm going to do what God has called me to do. Watch this. If I'm going to play to win, I got to make sure that I exceed expectations. Because watch this, y'all. Each and every day as a pastor, I work harder than the next person. I do stuff that I ask myself sometimes, why are you doing that? Somebody else can be doing that. While I was picking the trash out that trash can and the cockroaches was running out, I was saying, Teron, why, why are you doing this? And then the Holy Spirit said, why not you? Holy Spirit said, ain't you on the team? I said, yes, sir. He said, then keep pulling that trash out there. Watch this. It's not about title. It's not about what y'all call me. You call me pastor. He calls me son. I don't care what folks say. I made up in my mind I'm going to plead with him. We're living in a season where the enemy is trying to trick us. The enemy wants us to relax on how well we serve. Patricia, yesterday, while we serving, we probably had, I'm gonna be honest, we probably had four Mount Virginia Beach partners out here. But then the food bank sent another church with all Caucasian believers. And they came out here, about 12 or 13 of them. And they came out here and served, boy. When I tell you they served, these folks served. And God said, listen to me. It's not about God Almighty. I, I, I need y'all to hear me and hear my heart. God is saying to us in this season, some of us have allowed the COVID situation to make us think that we don't have to serve anymore. But I got word for you. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly now if Jesus didn't give up on the cross what makes us think that we can give up just because of COVID what makes us think that just because we were home for two years it ain't time to clock back in can you look at somebody next to you and tell you I don't know what you're doing I don't know what you've been up to but it's time to clock back in and then we got to play to win. Can, can, can you look at somebody else and tell them, oh, I don't know what you're doing in the church. I don't know how you're serving, but it's time to clock back in and watch this. I ain't playing to lose. I'm playing to win. Come on and stand to your feet. Oh, it's crazy, Katricia. I said, God, it's game Sunday. He said, yeah, you got to tell them about the game. But you got to get in the game to be able to play. 
some people Shan, some people just rather get the participation trophy I was there but you know what Chris I remember it back in the day I would be sitting on that bench and everybody be going in the game I'm sitting on the bench folk be joking yo man you get the game last night I said no nah, I ain't got in the game yet no problem but when I get in there you gonna know it and watch this every time he calls somebody my face was like this That's how I am with God. Every time God looks down the bench and say, who's next to want to get in the game? I'm like, God, here I am. Do I have anybody in, my, in this audience today that would glory whenever you get ready for me? I'm ready to go in the game. So look, if you don't get anything else out of this sermon, the behavioral objective today was to make sure that we understand that you have to be in the game. And you got to play to win. Watch this. Nobody wants somebody to get on the job and slack off. You, you, you ever met some folk like us? They go to work. Don't mess with me today. I had a hard night. I ain't come here to work today. We laughing. Watch this. We laughing. But watch this. We doing God the same way. God, I'm tired. I'm just healed. At least I came. God said, well, what if I said, well, at least I woke you up, but I ain't going to give you breath. God said, I gave you my best. I sent my son to down the cross for you. He said, I positioned you to win. He said, all I need you to do is get in the game. And when you get in the game, play like you want to win. Boy, when I got in the game, let me tell you something. When I got in the game, if it was three minutes left, I played like it was a whole quarter left. One day, I remember this, this I'm almost out. One day I got in the game, y'all. First I was down on the, I was on the bench, and I was mad because coach hadn't let me get in the game. It was probably two minutes left in the game, and I was just as mad as I could. And then he called my number. He said, Teron. I said, yes, sir. I threw off my sweats. I went in the game. When I got in the game, watch this, in two minutes, I got three assists, hit five points. And watch this, when I came to the bench, he had everybody huddled up. He said, out of everything I've been teaching, he said, Teron, you the only one listening. I say, me? Watch this. So now he knows that I want to win. Question for y'all. Does God know by the way you respond? Does God know by the way that you work? Does he know that you want to win and that he can trust you with the next assignment? You got to want to play to win. And so body of believers, I'm here to tell you, it's time out for being soft Christians. It's time out for just participating. We gotta start playing to win.